Hello everyone, um, I just want to make a quick video that shows and explains some of the mechanics involved with Crusader Kings 3 on console edition. Um, I don't feel like the tutorial really explains things well enough and it left me just trying to piece it together and figure it out myself. This game's already complex enough, so hopefully this helps. So when you go to create a new game, you can pick with uh, the R2 or L2 where you'd like to start. Um, I'm going to pick the King of Mongolia here, or I'm not too sure what that says. I'm too far from my TV. Um, so I'm going to pick him. We're going to turn Iron Man on. We'll pick him. We'll start. <clears throat> All right, so the very first thing you want to do is you want to open up the character view, and this, this shows your character, it'll show you your stats. Um, from here, you have to make a decision. And you want to bring up this this uh, wheel menu by holding L2. So the first thing you want to do when you start a new game, or you have a new heir, or somebody somebody takes over the throne, is you want to pick a lifestyle. Now, because of my stats are focused on a uh, martial status, we're gonna go with this. You get a bonus for your education due to his studies as a child. So we're going to pick this, and we're going to go with an authority and focus. Um, so once you pick that, you want to go back. The second thing you want to do in a new game is you want to use the R2 or L2 buttons to go to your council. Uh, your council. Now, because I am believe I'm a king in this situation, this is already filled out for me. You might not have it filled out. It's important to have this and have individuals with the highest stats in these slots and you want to try to maintain their happiness towards you it'll help stop um, plots against you and that kind of stuff so once you check out your your council it's all set up properly you want to you can scroll through your court this will show you what kind of guests you have who you can uh, take your make vassals It'll show you your prisoners, as well as give you options to invite champions or find physicians. Intrigue. This will show you the different plots you have against other people. And if you press R1, it'll show you the hooks, as well as secrets known. And um, so you can blackmail people and all that kind of stuff. This is really important later game. <clears throat> Factions start happening as you take over more more land and say the peasants get upset because you're taxing them too high or you're changing the laws Your vessels will create factions to overthrow you and they'll start like uh, we'll start having like riots and stuff like that <clears throat> So it's important to keep your uh, vessels happy Decisions now these are like more major moves that give you some kind of bonus in some way. I haven't used them very much, but I have used a few of them, such as searches for a physician, um, hosting a feast, that kind of stuff. So there are benefits to this. You can get rid of <clears throat> stress. You can work on your faith. There's a lot of great things that you can get done through this. Um, so just test it out. You know where where it is, and yeah. So. The realm tab will go over what level of crown you have, what's in your domain, what kind of holdings there are, and it's important depending on what country you are, uh, what kind of culture you have, that you build holdings. So you come here, <clears throat> and from this tab you press R1, and then you can build holdings here, construct new holding or you can build 
upgrades to your holdings, or sorry, you can construct new buildings, or you can actually upgrade your holdings by doing this. It's going to cost a, real, a large amount of money to do so, but this is how you can generate more income off your properties or more levies uh, from your nobles. Um, then here we'll give you a list of all your vassals. It'll tell you what kind of government they have. Um, and just give you a little bit more information on who's holding your titles. And then succession, it gives you an opportunity to change the laws. So if you want <clears throat> your one heir to get all your property instead of it being split apart, which it does initially, um, you're going to want to get this. Now to get this, you have to do some research. And I'm going to show this after we cover... I'm going to show how to do research after we cover the military tab. But this is essentially it. You're going to have a large requirement, and it'll show you there, right there, what you need. Um, and yeah, so this is a very handy, handy spot. It shows your different parties. You'll be using this quite a bit, so make sure to check it out once you're playing and you get into it. And then you can just like take a look, just explore the menu tabs and, and see what everything is. I'm going to do my best to explain it properly, but I might miss some stuff. So this is your crown authority, like I said. You're going to need this to change some of those laws. <clears throat> and just check it out as you, as you progress in the game. So last but not least is the military tab. I personally use automated, and I'll change this to balanced, depending on what I need. So you can raise your armies, you can raise, I haven't played this um, before, I haven't played this one before, but um, so I guess you can raise raiders, it'll tell you your act of wars, you can click on them and see the status, it'll show you your act of truces, you click on it, it'll show you the status, and over here, it'll show how much, how much of an army you can get. And then here you can create a regiment of arms. So I believe you get six, and then you can upgrade each one three or four times. And each time you're going to be paying this costed fee to buy these uh, regiment soldiers. So do keep that in mind. The fees climb pretty high pretty quickly, and it's important to maintain your your crowns or your your currency so you can call for troops through an alliance. Now, the council court, when you press square you can assign them specific tasks. The top here, if I believe, yep, yeah. so the top right one is how you fabricate claims on countries. So you click, you press square, click on it, press square, fabricate claim, then you click on this, and you go there for a set amount of time. You can click anywhere, you can click here, well you can't click in your own territory, but anywhere it's not. And then for a set amount of time, it'll take maybe two years, then at the very end it'll cost you a set amount of gold, ranging from 50 to 300, depending on how big the province is, how many territories you're taking over at once, etc. So, these square attributes are extremely important and just give them a read they have a very detailed explanation and now that you know where to find them at that is an option just, just look through them look through what they offer and pay attention to these so now we're going to talk about the research tab um, so it is in culture and you start off at tribal and it goes to early medieval, high medieval, late medieval. Now you can pick these by pressing X on them. It will increase your focus on them. And it'll it'll make you study them faster. I'm actually going to do this. Because I'm going to be playing this game. <clears throat> so don't forget about your culture. You can work on weapons, uh, your civics cultural stuff. It's very important. I did not notice this for my first play playthrough or two, and I wish I did. It would have changed the whole experience of the game, 
so please make sure to just read through them, check what they do, and just, you know, it, it's definitely worth looking at. <clears throat> so, the next one is your faith. So here, you can look, you can reform your own faith, or you can find another faith of other countries. It'll show you all the holy sites that are nearby, that follow the faiths, that are associated with them, and I'm, I haven't made my own faith yet, but I believe if you reform your own faith or create your own faith, you'll have your own holy site. I don't know very much about culture, but it, like I said before, at least you know how to get to these menus, and then you can check and see what it's all about. Uh, so, what next? The next part is your dynasty. So this will show your house, where you're from. This will show how many living members you have in your family and your relationships with them. This will show your dynasty tree. And that is it for dynasty. Now this is legacies. And I cannot stress how important this is. I, I didn't notice this on my first two playthroughs. But... Depending on which culture or civilization you are, the requirements are different. This needs renown. The other one before was crowns. But each time you get, you unlock these, they actually stay with you for the entirety of the game. Whatever benefits you get through this, you will pass on to your heirs. So this is a really important one. I I believe that the crowns would wouldn't be transferred over when you died. So it's important to spend them. I'm not too sure about Renown, but I'm assuming it's the same way. I don't really know exactly the, the details. But make sure to spend this on these legacies. And like I said before... Oh, as my, this freeze? Oh, I get those. Yeah, so that could be found again in Dynasty, and then Legacies, and yes, very important, I can't stress this enough. Now, one last thing that I want to point out, and this is when you die, right? So, in the very beginning, when you die, all your properties get split between all your heirs. Um... Now this could be a real, a really big hassle because you can work so hard and get all these properties and when you die, they go to all your kids and now everybody's fighting for it. Um, to avoid this, you want to maintain as many titles as you can in your name. So I have four out of five of my possible holdings, right? If I have any more than five, what you want to do is you want to give them to your kid. So if I have, but you're not any kid, just you, you only want to give them to your heir. So let's say I have four, five of my own, and I, I conquer two or three more plots, or a duchy. What I do is I give that to my child. The other option is, is you can give it to a high-ranking vessel, but you don't want them to be immediately related to you. You don't want them to be your brother, your father, your, your anything like that. Yeah. Because then they can actually start working on the claim towards your property. So I'm going to quickly show you how you can give property to your child or titles or take them away. And you can mess around with it yourself. But So you're going to want to bring up the menu uh, with triangle or Y. You go to the player air. Now from here you highlight the player and you press square I believe. I can't remember what it is on Xbox. And it brings up this options menu of what you can do. Okay? So, oh, it's right here, it says grant titles. 
So you go here and it, it'll show you the options of what you can grant as a title. So I can grant this and that. I can grant both those as a title. And if I press X, I will lose two of my, my realms and my son will have two. So if I had five and I just took over a bunch of places now I have seven, I just go give them to my, my heir and fill him up on the titles. And then when I die, he gets all my titles too. And then from there, you can split them to your heir again, or like I said, to some high-ranking vessels that aren't immediately related to you. So hopefully this kind of helps out a little bit, and it gives you a little bit of a grasp of the menus, what they do, how to navigate. And like I said, just explore, to feel it out, look around. Um, you know, like this game's difficult, you're gonna die a few times, but just take your time looking through the menu, and it's a lot more straightforward than I would have thought. Um, I think I just, you get overwhelmed with all the information that's there, and the, the, the tutorial for the game doesn't really teach you very much about how to go through all the menus where your culture is and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's, it's kind of obvious when you look at it, it says culture, but I mean, who would have guessed that under dynasties, there's a legacies tab that will affect you for your entire playthrough so again i really hope this helped if you guys like the video shoot it a like and uh yeah we'll see you next time i i also stream so my uh my account is rolla jones i believe if you'd ever like to tune in feel free anyways thanks again i hope you guys have a great evening evening and bye for now